All right, I'm on hole number nine of the City of Light tournament. I'm in Tuesday's qualifying round in the Ricky Division. Let's go to Golf Clash Notebook. Check it out. Hole number nine. I ended the tour, the whole eight video a little quick. I had a call on my work phone, and it was one of my teammates when we were talking about some of the holes. Wasn't sure who it was, so I had to answer it. All right, I am um, changing stuff up a little on how I've played this hole in the past. Um, just because the normal shot here is in the past using an extra mile, you know, pretty much the best that I can get is getting out here. I've had it a couple times in one-on-one -on -one play where I got really lucky and was able to end up dribbling out here into the fairway, but that is a huge exception rather than the rule. Normally, with my extra mile, I end up somewhere out here in the rough and I always have my usual suspects in the bag, which include Nirvana. My red line is going to be somewhere in here, and with the top spin and stuff, you can get on and get your eagle and go home. So in one-on-one -on -one play, that's a pretty safe bet because you don't have to, you don't have to do anything super special. It does take a bigger ball um, normally to get out into this area, so you got this shot, and it's not necessarily just the bigger ball for getting out here. It's the bigger ball for this shot. So you know, if you come at this hole. I'm always always bringing a power three ball unless you're just, you know, laying it up. Now I did try in my in my low level account to lay up on this hillside, and so coming at it with a QB, I thought, okay, you know, this is the shape of this area right here. Um, this this area right here is it, it starts off down here at the bottom and it's flat, and then it comes up, and then here's your little pad up here. So with a QB. I thought, you know, you're you're in this area here with your red line. I thought, no big deal. So first bounce is here. So first bounce is here. Second bounce comes up, does what it's supposed to do, and then it hits it right on the flat, right on the flat somewhere in here. And instead of hitting it and then taking a bounce and coming up and then coming to a stop, it hit with just the right amount of trajectory so that when it hit that that area coming up, it just scooted. And it actually, with my lower level account, it looked like you know the ball was going to stop somewhere up in here and it actually once it hit it scooted across the thing and ended up down here in the rough so just for for demo purposes so that i could clear this up in my own mind instead of trying to go forward and make some hero shot i just turned it around and just chipped it up here to the top where i really wanted to land and with a low level account and a big dog and a three power ball from this area my big dog's red line was like up in here and I was able to get it up and get it on I think I was actually pin high behind the hole up here on the on the hillside on the fairway where I was able to to get it in the hole and would have ended up with an eagle if I hadn't duffed the first shot but it is possible so what the thing here is is how to stick it up on the top of this hill and you you need to get as much you don't want to be back here on the back of this you want to be as close up here in the front so that when you come at it with your big dog your second shot you're able to engage this fairway if you can engage this fairway and i think i was actually back here was where my red line was where i was just able to engage this fairway and with max top spin i was getting up you know my ball guide looked like it was here and with max overpower i was able to get it to come up towards the hole so the deal is if you're going to lay up on this, you've got to get enough distance here that you can actually engage this fairway because if you're only able to engage this fairway, um, you're not going to be able to get enough to get up there. So it is possible for you to do the layup to get up to the holes. But if you're going to do a max overpower hook shot and you're trying to get some distance, we've been, you know, in the past we've explored out here with an extra mile and a Titan and you end up out here. An extra mile and a Kingmaker. Uh, you end up out here. Um, the curl helps a little, and every now and then you might catch it right, and you might end up out here in the fairway, but this is pretty much the distance range that you'd be looking at if you did catch it right. So, And sometimes at the extra mile, you can overshoot and you can get on this flat. You can see the shadow. You see this little shadow right here. So it drops down hard. So sometimes you, with the extra mile, you can actually get the distance right where your landing zone is out in here and you actually hit it on the flat and it takes a flat trajectory and it either goes right into the water or you'll end up over here in the sand and then you end up short over here and that shot is difficult to get on. You really want to have that little extra distance and be up here if you're going to be in the rough. So at the beginning of the week during the practice round, we practiced this shot with a katana 
so that we had a little less distance with our extra mile and I was still hanging up in the rough. It, it did put us back here a little bit more so we had a little less distance so you didn't really have to worry about overshooting here in the front and getting that flat trajectory but what it was doing was is you were still putting you off if you look at your line you know from here anywhere on that you know your lines going out here so trying to to cover this gap this gap right here that's a huge gap so you're pretty much with an extra mile gonna end up here now with a apocalypse and a katana you have a much better shot of getting up here because you've got twice as much curl especially if you've got a you know level three where you got 72 I mean that that extra 25 curl is monstrous but because it has so much curl more curl you do have to set that ball up more to the left so you'll have to adjust that shot I'm coming at it with a big topper because I don't have I do have an apocalypse in this account but it's only level two and with level two I still have a ton more curl it's still got 72 so it's still got 25% more curl than my extra mile so an apocalypse would be would be a way to go at it you'll have to set it up further out here what I'm doing is setting up with my big topper I'm using a big topper and a kingmaker and we're setting up out here now the last time I shot this I was right I had my white ring right on the transition between the sand and the water and when you're looking at it there's a you can see the where the sand is where it's a little bit blue right here where the water's kind of waving up on the sand I had I had it set up where my white ring was right on that transition and you're hitting further back into this area so you're in a narrower part of the neck and what happened was I, when I came out I was more on this line right here and the this rough area gets long you know you're gonna have to hit it farther and farther the further up here you go in order to clear that and I just barely clipped it and then dribbled out right here so I want to try and get out here where I'm actually this bounce on this side is hitting the fairway so that I can roll forward so I'm gonna move it out just a little bit farther I'm gonna move it out to the point where my white ring is right on I mean like maybe just a titch where it's not even it's clear water I'm gonna move it out just a little bit to try and pick up that that extra distance here now the question is, is the wind in the tournament, normally when I'm taking max over power hook shots, I take the wind out. The wind in the tournament is going this way. So it's going with us. So the question here is, is do I take the wind out? Because where we're hitting out down here, you know, we're hitting in a fairly narrow part of the neck here. If we leave the wind in, it's going to push that ball forward a little bit and we may end up hitting a little bit more on the pad where we can get a little bit more distance on the other side. So I think I'm going to leave some of the wind in. I'm going to leave maybe two of the wind in. Um, I talked to my teammate about the shot and how much he's taken out because he's been practicing. We've, we've got several people on our team that have been practicing these shots and we've been tossing them around. So I did some demos and shot them up and then people have been practicing them and then been using their clubs to kind of see where, where our, our, our landing zone is because you're going to have to practice this shot with your clubs in order to get this dialed in. And several of us have the same type of club, so we're able to kind of work those numbers. So that's what I'm going to do on here. I'm going to take a big topper. Maybe. Game's going to restart. Take a big topper. Kingmaker. I'm going to use the second anniversary ball because it's Kingmaker lookalike. It's in costume. <laughs> So I'm going to take, let's pick ball first. So I'm going to take a second anniversary or an anniversary ball. Big tapa. I'm going to take this bag right here. I've got a Nirvana and a Spitfire, a Sniper, a Saturn Claw. I mean, the reality is, is that the Claw is not going to come into play. What will come into play is the Sniper or the Saturn. If I get where I want to get, the Saturn is going to be the club that comes into play. Let's see here. Let's look at ball guide. My Saturn's got better ball guide. And I like my Saturn. You can get every you can get this done with a backbone. And a backbone's a lot more accurate. But I do feel comfortable with my Saturn, so I'm gonna take my Saturn. It's a better utility club. But when you get an upper level backbone, it's a great utility club too. All the common clubs when they're upper level are awesome clubs. 
I think that's what I need, and that's what I'm going to take. Let's see what we can get done. So even though we're in the qualifying round, and I am qualifying today, I'm still practicing. I'm still trying to dial these shots in to try and get, get these shots better and better and better. I see people comment all the time on Facebook, you know, you guys, all you do is practice, and you got accounts, and you're practicing, and why are you guys, why do you guys feel you need to give notes to each other and hey if you quit practicing you're behind when you think that you know it all and you quit trying to learn then you are now behind so this is just like anything else the more you practice the better you get at it and when you think you're the best you need to keep practicing because whoever's second best I can tell you they're trying to be the best they're not going to quit practicing now let's see if our opponent t tries to do the layup here and maybe you can see what I'm talking about as far as the scoot. And they're going to put some backspin on, which is wise. I put a bunch of topspin on my QB because it looked like it it, it would be able to uh, stick up there, but it did not. I'm going to close my eyes because I'm not exactly sure what's going on with this shot. And they hit it great to the right on top of what they just did. So I'm not my hope for them is low. So now their hope is is that I can get so I'm gonna do four and a half and however much tops in I can get on there. So I've got three eight. So when it's fully out I'm gonna go right there where the foam is. Lowest part of the I'm going to leave, I'm going to only take out half that wind. And I got it all. Let's see if that was enough. Let's see where it lands. Oh, I love that landing zone. And that's what I'm talking about right there. That's the shot that we've been working on this week to try and get that big topper stuff dialed in. Now, I was a little close coming with that rough right there. I was a little close, but you know, if you clip it up here or get caught up in the rough up here, we're talking super easy shot to get on, but I, I really liked that. And I liked where I landed on that pad go back and watch that video to see where I landed on that where that first landing zone was and watch the video that I did yesterday in the practice round and it was on the narrow part of the net going up yesterday and today it was up on the main flat I'm gonna go right at it I mean right at it Maybe just a little that way. Okay, 2 1. It's 1 1.9 per ring. So that leaves me two. So I'm going to do one ring and a sliver. Try and hit it perfect. Hit it great to the right. If you're going to hit it great on that shot and have a chance to get in, it would be great to the left. Great to the right's not going to make it. And I'm a little short. So I'm going to need to get a little closer to the hole. Even if I would hit that perfect, it would end ended up a little bit short. I mean, it might have been there. It might have been there. But there was a little bit of room to get closer. But I do like that shot. And I think... The, the thing I didn't like about doing this hole in the past with the extra mile, and I've had a lot of success on this hole, the thing I didn't like about the extra mile is, is that sometimes you could overshoot that. And if you cut it at just the wrong angle, you could hit that face up in the front and get a really bad flat bounce. And I think with the big topper, because you don't have quite as much distance, that you got a much better shot of, of landing on that pad up there so you can get good forward movement. We get in the hole, but I will tell you that if I can continue to hit that shot like that, 
I've never really thought of this hole as being a big alby hole because most of the time you're in the rough and you're just using your big rough irons to try and get on and you're looking at eagle and get the heck down the road. And a lot of people don't get eagles. So if you can come to this hole and get an eagle consistently, you're going to win a lot of shot. A lot of one-on-one, -on -one, you're going to do pretty well in the tournament because there's going to be a lot of people like my opponent that are going to end up with birdies here. But if, if I can consistently be out there in the front like that, um, that changes the whole dynamic on this hole. And we're now looking at this hole as maybe being a serious Albi contender. Um, trying to you know work that second shot and get used to it. Heck, I've only taken that, that shot maybe four or five times where we've really been getting it out there like that. And so if we can continue to do that where we have more and more practice on that second shot, this could become a serious albie hole. All right, that was hole number nine. So just looking at my round here, I shot an absolutely clean round. I didn't drop any shots, but what I did do is I picked up hole number one and hole number five. So I picked up those two par fours. Um, I really think in the weekend round, you're gonna have to shoot, you know, you're gonna have to pick up either one, five, or seven. You're gonna have to pick up two of those on every side to have any shot at it. And if you can pick up anything else on any other ones, that's just a bonus. But I think in the weekend round, um, I think the minimum score we're looking for is a minus 12, minus 24. You shoot that, you're looking at an easy top 20, depending on your bracket. Um, if you've got really good tiebreakers because you came in with a 12 and a minus 24, you could be looking at a high top 10. You could be in ninth, 10th place right there. If you can pick up one shot and be in the minus 25, you're probably looking at a top 10. You're looking at a top 10. But I think to win, it's going to take somewhere between a 28 and a 30 in order to win. And somebody, it always happens every tournament week. I mean, somebody's on fire on the weekend round. So I wouldn't be surprised. You know, you're always going to see that where somebody was on fire and they, they picked up all, all of the par fours. That's six. That puts you at minus 30. And then they got a hole in one or they got an alby or they got something else and they're at minus 31, minus 32. You're always going to see that kind of stuff where people are shooting a minus 34 and you're like, what the heck's going on? But I think in consistency-wise, in most of the brackets, if you can shoot a minus 28, you're, you're looking at a solid top five, top three in most brackets. And if you can shoot better than a minus 28, somewhere in the 29 or 30 range, you're looking at, if you don't win, you're, you know, somebody just, you know, you need to congratulate them because they, they went out there and beat you. But my goal going into the weekend round is going to be 28 at a minimum. Um, I think that's that's what it's going to take in order to be up at the, towards the top of the bracket. All right, that was the uh, qualifying round for the City of Light tournament in the rookie division. Thanks for watching.